King Jesus, King Jesus. Okay. Hey, you know, I like this guy, Gordon Duff. He's senior editor to the uh, Veterans Today. And I've been uh, following uh, Veterans Today since they, since they started. And uh, they started after uh, the war started in Afghanistan. And uh, Gordon Duff, he is uh, tied into the uh, intelligence community. And he just did an article called Neo America's Nuclear Command Meltdown. And I wanted to go over this to just get some reaction from the public. It says, uh, America's Nuclear Command Meltdown by Gordon Duff, Veterans Today Senior Editor with New Eastern Outlook Moscow. And the article is dated November 22nd, 2014. It says, while the U.S. is negotiating with Iran over nuclear program, the American lawmakers like Senator John McCain is calling for preemptive strikes on America's ally, Pakistan. America's own nuclear weapons program is suffering from not only failures in command, but inventory shortfalls as well. It says this week, Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel is expected to announce the entire restructuring, restructuring of America's nuclear weapons force based on findings of two studies, one from within the military. The other highly secret has examined over two decades of espionage, weapons theft, and the takeover of key nuclear command positions by both religious extremists and individuals with personal lives so out of control that they are considered at risk for blackmail. Tracking, nu tracking missing nukes. It says in Britain, something even stranger is going on related to nuclear weapons. Barrister and author Michael Shrimpton is on trial in London for making hoax nuclear weapons threats against the London Olympics, or so it is being reported by the press. The truth is, as usual, somewhat different. Shrimpton, working with reporters from the UK Guardian, a former head of MI5, and an engineer involved in the mysterious South African nuclear program, has been tracking a series of missing nuclear weapons built in South Africa but purchased by Britain through authorization of then Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. The transaction was negotiated by Dr. Charles David Kelly and his young assistant David Cameron, now Prime Minister of Britain. As some will note, Kelly is said to have killed himself in 2003 using over-the-counter pain relievers. A number of prominent forensic pathologists have declared Kelly's death murder. Kelly was a strong critic of then British Prime Minister Tony Blair. In 2005, in a Guardian article by Tim Shipman, by Tim Shipman, it was cited that of the 10 nuclear weapons built by South Africa, one was tested, six were dismantled by America, and three were bought by Britain and were missing with one of the missing having made his way to North Korea. Shrimpton's trial is about a missing nuclear weapon and his prosecution part of a government cover-up. Shrimpton's claim about German secret society and weapons recovered from the cursed may seem far-fetched, but an IAEA official cites a U.S. nest nuclear emergency security team being dispatched to the United Kingdom to recover a nuclear weapon during the Olympics. Secretary of Defense Hagel, however, 
has much more serious problems. The most serious and one spoken of least is that of missing weapons inventory. Sources at the highest level of the IAEA and Department of Energy have confirmed that all records of nuclear warheads retired from service from the start strategic, strategic arms limitation treaties beginning in 1992 were missing. In a leaked portion of the Able Danger documents, it is revealed that the Department of Energy may well have both destroyed records leading to the theft of 350 nuclear warheads and supplied thieves with highly classified information as to the technical specifics of the decaying nuclear pits, information that would allow otherwise useless nuclear weapons to be re remanufactured. When the U.S. government under Clinton shut down the investigation in 1998 and issued gag orders on all those involved, former President George H.W. Bush set up a private team headed by his close friend, Roland Carnaby, his protege while CIA director. Carnaby and team members were able to trace an operation headed by Victor Bout, the Lord of War, a CIA affiliated arms trader, removing nuclear pits from the Pantac storage facility in Texas. Documents outline the specifics, the use of refrigerated trucks, pit storage at a packing plant, the pits being sorted by phys physicists working inside a fertilizer plant outside the town of Waco, Texas, and the weapons being shipped via the Canary Islands, Africa, and on to Israel. The Abel Danger investigation traced weapons brought into New York before 9-11 and maintained surveillance on combined teams that included American, Israeli, and Saudi personnel, some of whom were arrested on 9-11. Arrests were quickly covered up. Some involved, including the Israeli team that placed jammers that disabled emergency responders' radios were held for some weeks before being repatriated. Other teams tasked with destroying the George Washington Bridge and the Lincoln and Holland Tunnels were arrested but flown out of the country at the orders of President George W. Bush. Sources say Bush was being blackmailed. The same sources highly placed claims Cameron's failure to act on the Olympic nuclear threat was blackmail related also, explaining why the British government would risk so much in prosecuting Shrimpton. Note that Shrimpton was a was arrested after reporting reporting being told of a terror threat. His report was made to M16 on a telephone line intended to be used by the public to report terror threats. In 2008, Roland Carnaby was murdered. In 2013, the fertilizer plant was destroyed in one of the largest explosions since Hiroshima. Arms trader Victor Raup was extradited to the United States and hasn't been seen since. Dmitry Kirlevzov had originally broken the story of nuclear proliferation and terrorism. Kirlevzov is currently in prison in Thailand at the request of the U.S. government. The key issue to world security is the safety of America's nuclear weapons and the quality of the command structure that controls the deployment of these weapons. During the Clinton administration, America's nuclear in inventory was pilfered according to the IAEA sources to bolster Israel's program after the meltdown of Demona and to supply arsenals to Saudi Arabia, South Korea, Taiwan, Brazil, and others. During the Bush 43 administration, something far more serious happened. America's nuclear command structure was compromised at every level, culminating in the theft of nuclear weapons from Minot Air Force Base in 2007. An undisclosed number of thermonuclear weapons loaded onto B-52 and later landed, or more appropriately was forced to land, at Boxtail Air Force Base some hours later. Immediately thereafter, 
Secretary of Defense Robert Gates ordered the Department of Defense to remove all oversight on nuclear weapons from the United States Air Force, placing an Army General in overall command of what had previously been Air Force Weapons Inventory. Soon thereafter, 84 personnel in America's largest nuclear man command were removed, 12 permanently due to accidents and suicide. Since that time, over 200 members of that command have been forced out and America's entire nuclear command has been put under direct oversight. The greater problem is twofold and involves a breakdown of command authority and discipline as well as treason. Not only after Bush 43 took office, his backers in the extremist Christian evangelical community approached Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld. They wanted to assure that all military command personnel would follow the, the tenets of the obscure religious sect Rumsfeld, Cheney, Bush, and Ashcroft belong to. This sect seeks to bring about a nuclear apocalypse tied to the expansion of greater Israel in order to bring about what they call the rapture and end times. Their religious beliefs are a mix of ufology, belief in alien influence, satanic worship, and that a select group will be called to rule the world at the side of an alien master race while those left behind will die in misery. Their religion is a mix of misinterpreted biblical prophecy, science fiction, and the occult. In fact, many of those at the highest levels of U.S. government retain no actual Christian beliefs at all, not by any conventional standard. Then again, there is a secondary core of dual citizens controlling key organizations, Homeland Security, the Department of Justice, and the legislative branches of government loyal to Israel and willing to work with what they privately refer to as the occult crazies that back Israel but generally despise Jews themselves as people. This is the group that gained control of America's nuclear arsenal, privatized CIA operations and the U.S. Supreme Court and the White House itself. Thus, when President Obama took office, retaining Secretary of Defense Gates, it took him some time to realize the magnitude of the threat. Only when Senator Chuck Hagel was confirmed as Secretary of Defense and General Martin Dempsey as Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff did the threat become clear. The penetration of the service academies, West Point, Annapolis, and Colorado Springs Air Force Academy, and the threat the occult sects running those facilities pose to national security. What we currently what we are currently seeing is the final stages in regaining control of America's nuclear forces. Much, however, will never be made public. The missing weapons, the development and use of covert tactical nuclear weapons, and the very real threat of nuclear terrorism often spoken of by former Vice President Dick Cheney, a man very aware of how many nuclear weapons are in the wind.